All right, what's up guys? Alex Stavaletti from Detroit Speed here with Garrett Reed. Uh, he runs the Instagram page, American Muscle HD. Uh, we've been working with him for a while now. And about two years ago, at this very event, LS Fest East, uh, he approached us about this build he's working on. It's a 1984 Monte Carlo SS. And at the time, he didn't have the car. So we were just kind of talking about his plans and what he wanted to do. He didn't have a car at that time and he wanted a Monte and we were trying to push our G-Body products. So uh, we collaborated on that, worked together. Uh, he's got our Speed Kit 2 front, Speed Kit 3 rear on it, and uh, a bunch of other real cool goodies. Um, so let's kind of, let's just talk about the car. Yeah. So uh, like Alex said, I, um, I came to this event. It was the first time I'd been to LS Fest and you know, I got introduced to Alex by another friend and we talked about some stuff and he was talking about how, yeah, you know, they were trying to push the G-Body stuff and maybe some third gen stuff. And I was like, ah, I don't really want to grow a mullet. So I didn't want to get a third gen at the time. So I went ahead and uh, I was like, all right, that works. And then I met, I met Bill uh, at Holly and kind of just snowballed into, into an effect at the show. And I was like, all right, well, maybe we can make this work. So um, a couple months go by right before, right after SEMA, uh, my buddy Luis that did the motor in this, in the car, um, found the car out in Vegas and uh, he was like, dude, this thing is really clean. It's in your budget. What do you want to do? I'm like, all right, well, I, I, believe, I trust you, you know, you're going to steer me wrong. So I wired him the money and got the car. So it sat for, shoot, it sat for uh, from December all the way until maybe July, early August of the following year, 2018. And we were compiling parts over the time. I was right, you know, right. working with new companies like Chevrolet Performance with the crate motor, LSX 376V8, Whipple 2.9 blower. Uh, well, let's uh, let's pop the hood okay, and talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah, too. Yeah, we'll talk about things. Yeah, we'll just we'll run through the whole car. Right. Oh yeah, no slouch. No, that's something right there. She gets down the road pretty good. So uh, yeah, so like I was saying, Chevrolet Performance hopped on board, and we uh, we decided to go with a LSX 376B8 bone stock, straight out the crate. Uh, we wanted to do that primarily. We could have thrown a cam in it right off the jump, and we could have done some other stuff. But I wanted to work with Chevrolet, and we wanted to kind of obviously promote their product as it sits. So straight out of the crate, straight into the car, nothing done to it. Um, and same thing with the blower. I mean, the blower, you know, it's not much, you can change it to fully up the boost. So we didn't right. do anything with that. Literally as it comes out the crate and we don't, we have never dynoed it. Just going off of numbers and what other people have made with LS3s and these blowers, I'm guessing it's around 650 crank, 670 crank. So it's probably high fives, maybe close to six to the tire. Uh, we don't know, it's all speculation, but. Right, you know, and I've driven it too. I mean, it feels, it feels great. Yeah, it helps that the car is so light, you know what I mean? It has yeah. really hardly any weight in the back of the car. Um, and it's on a 275 tire. I know a lot of people run 275s, but I mean, it's just, it's not a lot of contact patch. So when it feels like it's, I mean, when it gets into power, it's going to break those tires loose. And, yeah. Uh, these, uh, BF Goodrich is also in this project. They're, uh, they're my tires. They work with, those, work with me on tires. The BFG Comp 2s, these are great, great tires. Uh, road tires. Um, and, then they're, and that's the thing too, like, you know, the best tire you can get from BFG, in my opinion, for performance driving is the Rival S. Yeah. But when it comes to something that you drive on the street right. and you could daily drive, and when you get into the rain, the Rival S, is, it's not made for that. No. So, I mean, this is like the ultimate compromise for maximum performance, but, you know, something that you're going to daily drive. So. 100%, man. Because the thing about it is, like you talked about rain, when we were driving this car to uh, Power Tour, um, the rain was a problem, like from the jump. It was just raining non-stop and I mean we're doing 60 miles an hour and I mean this thing I mean this the water's not you know pulling up on the road but it's enough that you want to you think you should slow down we were cutting through that water like nothing these tires yeah. are great for driving in the rain um you know obviously if we still got on it it was you know it would get a little sketchy but just, cut, <laughs> right. just cutting through the water just <laughs> yeah. driving normally it, it did it did fantastic so yeah I mean it is a blower car so any time you roll into it in the yeah, rain it's, the it's torque, gonna spin the torque's always there man and if it breaks loose on drive pavement it's gonna do it in the wet but um you know aside from the engine i mean everything else that you see under the hood was all holly um the beautiful thing about holly performance is that uh for most at least most gm product cars a bodies uh i guess some b bodies f bodies and, and g bodies they literally have everything you need to swap ls into the car um from transmission cross members engine mounts 
uh, front serpentine drive setups, engine ECU setups, uh, you know, plugs, wires. So it's, it's everything. Everything yeah. you can think of. Like this whole entire mid mount front drive system is straight off, straight from them. You can order it on their website. It plug and plays, plug and play. AC is lower, lower left. Um, this actually might be the low mount thing because it's based on the AC compressor. So the AC compressor is down there. Right. It's not hooked up currently, but. Um, so you got you know your water pump and everything. It's it's really clean, really really clean system. They have a, they have a low, mid, and high mount setup depending on whatever you're running for your blower or whatever. So you have um, what you're doing. But um, yeah, hooker hooker polyurethane um, engine mounts work great. The transmission cross member worked great with the four lady that my buddy Luis built. I mean, it all was just really well put together. A lot of people ask me all the time, it's like you know how did how was how easy was it? Now I wasn't there when it was done, but. What I was told, and just the, the availability of parts that are available to do this, it seems you can like just it's throw it right you together. Just, basically, yeah. I mean, it's one of those things you just snap and it's all there. You're not really having to worry about fabricating, yeah. you know, to make stuff work. Um, you're not having to borrow parts from other vehicles and all that stuff. So that's that's what I really like about what they do, and it's and it's semi, it's pretty affordable, and the and the yeah. quality is there. You know, um, I've called up, I've called them up a couple of times to ask them questions about stuff, and. They have really knowledgeable uh, technical support people. Um, yeah, they're just a really great company to work with. Right. I know you guys use. Oh, a we lot use. Of yeah, we use Holly like everything. Yeah. I mean, if you look at every single build we've done in the last two or three years, I mean, it, everything gets a, a Holly Dominator. Yeah. So I mean, we, we put a Dominator in everything. I know you have a Dominator in this car, and yeah. just the tunability, the amount of inputs and outputs you have. Oh, I, mean, I know. It's fantastic. Shout out to Holly. That's your little. That's the plug I got you right there. You know, once you got the build, you know started we i know we sent the product out um so you're running like i said speed kit two front yeah and it's a uh, coil over front suspension right. so it's got the coil overs chassis braces upper lower control upper arms, lower control arms um and sway then, bar yeah and then we did the 600 series gearbox yep gearbox um, which and made a stance. night and day difference i mean this car had an original steering gearbox i'm pretty sure from 84 and as you can as any car you know the steering gearbox man they get they start getting playing them they start having yeah all just, sloppy but and i mean it was it was okay but you start getting going you know pretty fast and you're just like oh you don't know yeah you don't input. you don't know what it's gonna do exactly and so even this, like you know just you have the steering gear yeah you've got a you know a small steering wheel so right. your inputs i mean it's just it's it darts tight. yeah wherever you want it to go so I love it, man and the one thing about it and i was I, I won't lie to you man i was super nervous about the coilover suspension for this car because i was just thinking like i've i've heard that coilover suspension could be real stiff because i know like it's obviously built for pro turn pro turn cars are real stiff the throw them in turns and all that stuff so i was worried i was like man is this is this suspension gonna be so stiff that i'm not gonna want to drive it on the street completely blew me away like right it that, is stiffer mm -hmm. it's it's significantly stiffer than stock suspension but it's not stiff to the point where you don't want to drive it on the street like obviously if you hit a huge bump you're gonna feel it that's but with anything that's though. with anything yeah. yeah you're gonna feel it it goes down the road so nicely when me and my buddy jerry first got in the car and we're going on the street we were like literally looked at each other and we're like wow like this is impressive mm -hmm. like i'm actually glad I'm, I'm shocked and i'm glad that it rides as supple as it did yeah and you can you know you get this stance too oh i know so i mean you get the perfect stance you get the performance the yeah. you know increased handling but like you said it's, it's still comfortable yeah. and it's you know, it's not like a compromise you have to make. Right, so. exactly. Like I have no problem driving this car on the road, you know, to the, you know, to the grocery store, to, you know, the other side of Georgia, you know, whatever, or just coming out and beating it around the show. Like it's, it can do it all, which is what I really love about it. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, in the ease, the thing I loved about it also is that everything was, everything was so simple to install. Right. Um, you know, I've, I've, I've dabbled in a lot of different things in the automotive world with different vehicles. Uh, I had a bagged, you know, 1500 Silverado, and of course with that you had to custom build stuff to make, you know, the four links. All this stuff is a four link car from the factory, but it literally is just so easy. It was so easy to just bolt everything up. Right. We try and make it as easy as possible yes, for you. Yes, and I agree. So. You did a very good job on that. So I, that's one thing I would definitely applaud you guys. So we appreciate that. Yeah. So let's get into the real big story the elephant in the room that everyone knows about this car mm -hmm. so if you guys have been following us and, and the posts we've been doing about coming to ls fest and even just recently posts about this car um this car went to uh hot rod power tour 2019 and it was stolen in charlotte so garrett called me it was probably 
6 30 7 a.m um during power tour and he said hey my car just got stolen so we did what pretty much everyone else would do we hopped on the internet and we started posting pictures of it and telling people hey if you see this car you know call 911 or you know call you know charlotte police department and just let them know like you spotted the car we're just trying to get it found because you know we're invested in this car garrett is a, a friend of the company and a real great guy and a friend of ours so we tried to do anything we could to get his car back and i mean i'll kind of let you go from there and talk about you know what happened after that yeah so uh, the whole irony of the whole thing was that uh you mentioned the steering wheel that's a, a quick release steering wheel and um you know we we were thrashing to get the car done before Ella, before power tour we, we had just got it out of paint i mean it had been out of paint two weeks and um we got it back to my buddy's house and we're thrashing to get it all done and everything and and we got it on the road i mean we were literally turning wrenches the night before we left and so we didn't have time to obviously we didn't have time to get the interior done the interior was going to get done after we got back from that show so um you know like as most 80s cars um i knew in my head it wasn't incredibly hard to break into right somebody wanted to break into it so i'm thinking all right well last ditch effort what can i do personally to try to alleviate a, a reason for somebody to steal the car um and that my my decision was the quick release steering wheel mainly because i wanted one too i mean i was like yeah. it's a race car so i'm like quick release is kind of cool right so uh ironically i posted a picture of it on facebook the day before uh holding the steering wheel outside the car and i said i said jokingly i was like this should deter a theft <laughs> yeah which <laughs> i know when you called me i was like man that's i was really unfortunate i know? was just like because I, I honestly i mean i didn't know what to feel like i was really numb about it right when it happened and uh yeah so i you know me and my buddy jerry that was with me kind of had to find reasons to joke about it um just to keep us from getting you know too pissed and uh it, and that was one of the things we laughed about was the steering wheel and i was just yeah. like well at least i got this yeah you know what i mean yeah, I so uh yeah that was that and um yeah so basically what happened was i woke up we went to the show on saturday and we were there all day it was in the holly booth whatever whatever had people coming up talking to me which was super cool you know people say that they've been following the build since the beginning and that was the first time it had been out That's the, too this is the, that was the very first show that this car had ever been to i mean i'd kicked around town you know breaking it in a little bit but that was the first road trip had been on first show had been to and uh so that was you know that was really cool and so then fast forward we go back to the hotel and we park it outside the hotel with along with 100 100 other hot rods and uh lo and behold i wake up in the morning and i look out the window and i'm like my car is not where i parked it yeah and i had to kind of joke i was like wait a minute that's where i parked it right yeah you, you know, had to think and you're in your yeah. shock and you had to like, think about it like wait a minute i know i parked it there last night and then it hit me i'm like oh my god yeah so you know my heart goes a million miles a minute and uh i run downstairs and what was crazy was my car wasn't the only one stolen it was like five cars that were stolen it was an 83 malibu wagon that was parked just to the left of mine gorgeous car his car got stolen just i guess right before i come downstairs and um so it was uh it was heartbreaking because obviously put nine months worth well a year and a half worth of concept in yeah uh, you know time from start to finish, start to finish is like this is what i want yeah. to this is what i have right yeah because this is my first hot rod muscle car i guess you could say i had a i had a built silverado but everybody nobody claimed it as a muscle car rightfully so but this was my first one so it kind of really cut deep man because i'm just like you know folks can't never have nothing nice you know it's just yeah like, yeah so um yeah i guess that was it and and then we could we could fast forward yeah to i guess it was earlier early august yeah. or so um i was just sitting at home and garrett called me and he told me oh they've recovered my car and then he told me where it was and it was like 15 minutes from my house yeah. if that so you know we loaded up we went to go look at the car and you know the guy on the phone had said like oh everyone in the tow yard is in love with that engine 
So, I mean, that immediately gave us hope. Yeah. We knew, you know, the car, the engine's still in it. So hopefully, you know, we're not walking up on a car that's on blocks. Yeah. You, you would figure someone steals a car and they pop the hood and see that. Yeah. That's the first thing that comes out. You would but think there was so much heat around the car from people sharing it and putting it out there on social media that they just were like, you know what, we can't. Yeah, because they, they found the car in the middle of a field. Yeah, they found the car in the middle of a field about a month and a week after it was stolen. It was stolen on the 9th of June, and they found it on the 18th of July. So over a month and a week, they found it. Um, you know, so it was uh, seriously a blessing. Um, you know, I honestly attribute the fact that nothing was taken from it simply from all the people that shared it. Um, and that's what we like to think. We like to think that, you know, all the posting and getting the word out there and reaching out to people that's what that's what really helped yeah. you know the power of social media you know to to get you your car back and yeah. you know as soon as uh as soon as you got in touch with insurance and worked everything out you know i you know hopped out of work went and picked the car up yeah. and luckily i mean it was it was missing on a couple cylinders but we went ahead and just swapped out the spark plugs and went through the tune and you know jason at detroit speed he he was gracious enough to come over to my house, you know, after hours, and we just went through the tune and, and got it running the way it does now. And I mean, mm -hmm. it, it runs great. You know, yeah. if you really wanted to, he, you could drive this back to Georgia. Yeah. So, just uh, a crazy story. You know, a lot went down, and you know, we're glad Garrett got the car back, and we're glad to have it here at LS Fest. So, if you guys plan on being here at LS Fest this weekend in uh, Bowling Green, Kentucky, it's in the Detroit Speed booth. So. We want you guys to stop by and see it and uh if garrett's you know if garrett's around give him a high five give him a handshake um but we're just we're happy to have the car back here we're happy you know garrett gets his build back and um we're glad to be a part of it and yeah. uh also word on the street is uh garrett wants to roast those tires off this weekend uh -huh. so yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, something, yeah, so. we'll probably we'll have a video of that too if you guys can't make it out here. But yeah. uh, Saturday afternoon in the burnout contest, we're gonna uh, I'm gonna let her eat a little bit. I'm not gonna get too crazy because I don't want to break nothing. But yeah. at the same time, I gotta I gotta get it out of my system. I haven't driven the car in three months, and I got a heavy foot now. So yeah. I've always had a heavy foot, but I just cool. I gotta let it eat, man. Well, let's wrap this up right. You want to fire it up? Yeah. I mean, you know, everyone everyone's gonna <laughs> complain if we don't start it, and. Yeah, uh, see if I can <laughs> you you want me to do it? Yeah, cause guys, I'm not I'm not breaking into my own car. And yeah, you, it starts with a screwdriver. It's a little tricky. Here, here, hold this. I'll I'll do it for you. All right. <laughs> Beach Band Raceway Park. We hope to see you guys there.